guys, today on The Voice of Diabetes, we are going to talk about a class of medication that is relatively very new. And this class of medication is not only an anti-diabetic oral agent, meaning it's not just helping to lower blood sugar levels, but also it's helping in protecting the heart, protecting the kidneys. I mean, what is this thing, a miracle drug? Guys, this is Diana Bitucci, and if you guessed that we're going to talk about SGLT2 inhibitors, you guessed right. Today on The Voice of Diabetes, we are going to talk about Jardians, Farsiga, Invocana, and Staglatro. This is a new class of medications called the SGLT2 inhibitors, and they are one of our top, top, top favorite medications right now for treatment of diabetes. Did I forget to say top choice? That's right. It is one of the best medications because of all the things that they do. In addition to helping lower blood sugar levels, this class of medication is just blowing every other class out of the water because of the protection they provide for diabetics. So I am not going to lie, when this class of medication first came out, we were all a little bit shocked. It kind of seems to do the opposite of what we want to do because we've always associated sugar in the urine to be a dangerous thing because we knew that once there's a sugar in the urine, that means that diabetes is completely out of control and we need to do something to bring those blood sugars down. So you mean that this medication purposely causes for the sugar to be in the urine and that's okay? It kind of did not sit right with all of us. However, this medication definitely proved us wrong because we all love this class now. But in order to understand why we love it, you kind of had to understand how the medication works and what our kidneys do in order to appreciate this class of medications. Kidneys are a filtering system, meaning that the kidneys filter the waste in our body and they get rid of them. Just like when you're cleaning your house, you're getting rid of all the things that you don't need and all the garbage that you don't need in your house and you're keeping all the good things that you need. But let's just say I were to eat a chocolate, the kidneys will filter out all the excess sugar that I don't need and we know that that would be quite a lot because chocolate is all sugar and they would keep the amount of sugar that my body needs so everything kind of just flows regularly. With diabetes, the kidneys don't have that kind of sensor. They don't really sense how much they should get rid of. So what the kidneys do is they get rid of the amount that they want. They don't have a threshold saying, uh oh, this person's blood sugar is 220. I really gotta get rid of some more sugar. They kind, of, they kind of turn on and off whenever they want. So they get rid of the sugar that they believe they need to get rid of and they keep the sugar that they believe the system needs in the bloodstream. As a result, they're not getting, ri they're not getting rid of enough sugar and what's happening is the blood sugar levels are just rising and rising in the bloodstream, causing high blood sugars. What this class of medication does is it tells the kidneys, you know what, you need to get rid of all this sugar because I don't need it, the blood sugar levels are too high. What it also does is it gets rid of just enough sugar. So if your sugar, if your blood sugar is 260, it will bring down the threshold to about 120. And after that, it kind of shuts off. It says, okay, you don't need to work as hard anymore because I don't have extra sugar. I have just the right amount. That's a great benefit when we're talking about uh, diabetes because it doesn't cause low blood sugars because it can sense off when it needs to turn on and when it needs to turn off because it's so regulated and in sync with the kidneys. Unlike sulfonylureas like uh, glutazide, glyburide, and glomipuride, they are not that smart. They just tell the pancreas, keep punching on the pancreas to make more insulin and they can cause low blood sugars. This class of medications, the SGLT2 inhibitors, they do not cause that because they are very smart. And this is why we like this class of medication so much. Because this medication is uh, so smart and so powerful at reducing blood sugar levels, we are also seeing some weight loss with this class. Unlike sulfonylureas where we see weight gain, this class we actually see weight loss and it has a very good uh, A1C drop, roughly about one to 1.5%. When used in combination with other medications, we can actually see a more drastic drop. Um, we also are seeing that the higher the A1C is, let's just say you're that patient with an A1C of 10, we are actually seeing a more drastic drop than one or 2%. Sometimes we can see even more when added on with other medications, like a GLP, GLP-1 analog, like Ozempic or Victoza, uh, Trulicity and so forth. So this class of medication is incredible, guys. It is absolutely one of my top favorites. 
um, especially Jardians, which I will I will have a video on Jardians later. I talked about how this class of medications work dire directly with the kidneys. So actually, um, what, what happened is earlier when this medication came out, if the patient had kidney disease, we could not initiate the med medication. Not because it was bad for the kidneys per se, but because this medication needs the kidneys to function, we were worried that it could cause the kidney function to decline or it might not work as well because of the kidney decline. However, the data has been so overwhelming that now we are actually using this, this, this class of medication for kidney protection. As nephrologists, kidney specialists are actually calling and saying, hey, is there any way we can put this patient on an SGLT2 inhibitor because we need to preserve the kidney function, which is incredible. I never thought this day would come before we were actually discontinuing or not initiating this medication if patients have low EGFR and now it is being recommended that we start them so we can preserve and protect the kidneys. We know that diabetes affects all major organs in our body, including the kidneys and the heart, and these medications are proving to, to benefit and protect those organs. We know that cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in adults with type 2 diabetes, and according to the CDC, death from cardiovascular disease is 70% higher in adults with diabetes compared to those without diabetes. And patients with diabetes have a decreased life expectancy driven in large part by premature cardiovascular death. That is so sad, guys, but the fact that we have a medication that's actually now helping preserve and reduce cardiovascular death and reduce congestive heart failure is just absolutely amazing. And I must note that yes, we have nephrologists prescribing these medications, but guess what, guys? We actually have cardiologists prescribing Jardians now as well because it reduces CHF and also in, in, in reduction of cardiovascular death. They're using this both for primary and secondary prevention. We talked about how great this class of medication is. What are some of the things that we don't like about this class of medication? Is some of the side effects, which are actually not that serious, but I'll discuss them with you. Uh, we're seeing yeast infections because if you think about it, now we're urinating all the sugar and we know that bacteria love sugar. Um, and we're seeing this more common with women because of the anatomy of a female versus a male. Um, therefore, normally um, I tell patients to stay very well hydrated, but I also tell patients to sometimes make sure that they are, I tell them to use either water or a wet wipe after each restroom use. Another issue that we're seeing with this class, it, which is actually, we, we talked about that it could protect the kidneys, but we could see acute kidney, acute kidney injury as a result of this class. And it's not because the, the medication is causing or, or it's causing any issues to the kidneys. It's because of dehydration, because remember, it can cause excessive urination because now we're getting rid of all this sugar in the urine. So, and we need to replenish and bring, so we're losing more water, which is why we have to stay very well hydrated so that we make sure we bring that water back. But let's just say you're not a good water drinker and you say, I forget about it. I'm not gonna drink enough water. Well, dehydration can cause acute kidney injury, which is why I tell patients, make sure you're drinking enough water when you are taking a SGLT2 inhibitor. And I seriously sit down with them and I ask them, you have to make sure your urine should be more on the clear side. If your urine is dark yellow or even goldish brown, you are, you're gonna get the kidneys into trouble. And that's something we wanna avoid at all costs. So make sure that you guys are drinking enough water if you are on this medication, that you are replenishing the water that you are losing through the urine. Um, and obviously sometimes, you know, it can cause excessive um, urination for some patients who have bladder issues or, um, you know, urinary frequency as is, this can become problematic. But because this medication is so great and the benefits are so amazing, most patients just, they put up with it. I must note though, the longer you take the medication, so for the first three months when the blood sugars tend to be very high, the urination tends to be more excessive, but as the blood sugars come under more control, then it seems like that urination kind of slows down to a more normal routine where the patient can predict it and they're not nervous to leave the house per se or about you know the possibility of having accidents seems to be quite, uh, quite reduced after after a few months of using. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on this uh, great class of medication. Please share your stories with us down below because I will see you guys all next time. Take care.